my name is Eric Wolf, and I serve as the executive director of the World Food Travel Association based in Portland, Oregon. And just a couple housekeeping notes before we get started today. Thank you for attending this second session of the Online Food Travel Summit. Uh, the, this is the uh, second Online Food Travel Summit that we've ever produced. Our first event was in 2015, and we're pleased to share that we have doubled attendance this time over the numbers from uh, 2015. Uh, we have almost uh, we have almost uh, 259 delegates from 36 countries, which is really exciting to see. Uh, if you are going to be hashtagging at, uh, during the event, let me go ahead and show you the hashtags right here. Eat well, travel better. And we have a PowerPoint screen that is very excited to keep changing. Right, eat well, travel better, food travel, culinary tourism, and online food travel summit. So if you want to tweet or post anything on Facebook, uh, you should use those. So I want to thank you very much for doing that. Uh, let's see. We have several events coming up later this year, including Food Tourism, A Piece of Cake, which is taking place in Greece. And Maria, our presenter today, is one of the organizers. And I'm sure she'll mention something about that as well. Now, um, I'd like to give special thanks to uh, a few people today. Maria is one of uh, those individuals. Maria uh, is a ambassador for the Association in Greece, and she also serves on the Board of Advisors. Uh, some of our other people we'd like to thank there, including Yanya in Slovenia, who helped us with the um, marketing of the event. And um, session three, if anyone is attending uh, session three later, uh, uh, that is going to be postponed. Our speaker had a family emergency and unfortunately is at the hospital right now with his family member. So we will be uh, recording that next session three and sending out links to all registered delegates for that session. So without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and uh, get over to Maria. All right. So uh, Maria is uh, one of those amazing individuals. Uh, she runs Top Tourism, which is a nonprofit organization that promotes Greek tourism and culture. She was also the ambassador of the year for our association uh, last year. She serves on our board of advisors and the craziest thing she's ever done was quit a job in a law firm to start her own business. Maria, I don't think that sounds so crazy. <laughs> oh, okay. She's a fan of Stephen King and her favorite outdoor activity is dining al fresco, which I can certainly share. And then after Maria speaks, we will have uh, Zenny. And Zenny uh, works in vocational tourism training at the Hellenic Ministry of Tourism. She has 20 years in hospitality and tourism industry training. She loves Greek and Italian cuisines, as do I. And her favorite uh, outdoor activity is sailing. And her favorite everyday activity is Greek folk dancing, something I know nothing about. So without further ado, I would like to uh, invite Maria to share her screen. And I'll stop sharing there and uh, take it away, Maria. So let's talk about periods of economic crisis. According to the experts, we are talking about a financial crisis when an economy shows a sustained but obvious decline in financial activity. We have been experiencing such a situation in recent years in Greece and to a lot of other countries all over the world. Periods of economic crisis have historically made the shift, giving their place to times of economic prosperity. But when a country or a private company wants to experience periods of economic prosperity, they must first survive in times of economic crisis. When a businessman acts in such an economic climate, the first thing he has to do if he wants to survive is to be adapted to the new situation. In order to make a big step forward for the survival of his business, he has to find new, more affordable ways of producing, creating, and providing services, but also promoting his business activities. But what is the big challenge for any kind of business? The private companies have to survive, but also make a profit, since this is always the ultimate goal. There is no life financial organization if it falls to make profit in a particular economic period. To survive is a priority, 
But the most important thing is to make profits finally. The profitability has to be reflected in a certain period of time and after the implementation of a specific financial plan. In all areas, and therefore in the promotion of a business, there are specific rules. When our aim is to promote a business to the market and support it in order to make it profitable, in my opinion, we should definitely make the following steps. One, we have to be sure that our products are not only interesting and of good quality, but also have a competitive price. Two, we have to design an efficient plan of promotion. Three, reduce the amount of individual costs required by a successful promotion campaign, such as graphic design, advertisement, texting, etc. The reduction of costs. In a long-term economic crisis, it is important to find effective ways to reduce the costs. Moreover, the limitation of costs should not affect the quality of the services or goods offered, but also should not affect the quality and efficiency of the promotion strategy. One of the most effective ways to promote our business in time of economic crisis is the promotion through social media. What are the reasons for this and why this kind of promotion can help us efficiently? Common features of free promotion through social networks. Promotion is visible in our networking. Promotion is usually free of charge. The content of the promotion is defined by us. Promotion increases geometrically and it depends by the growth of our networking in all social media. Promoting to any social media has its own features and its own rules, but all of us can help our business if we use the right method. Food tourism. A special case with inexhaustible promotional content. Businesses that are engaged in food tourism in any way are a special case regarding their content to social media. Every traveler is considered to be a food traveler no matter for what reason he travels. The reason is obvious. All of us, when in a trip, will look for some place to satisfy our hunger. We will have breakfast at the hotel or at some local cafe and we will have at least one small and one big meal during every day of our trip. Most of us will taste a famous local recipe, a famous local sweet, a local wine, etc. Therefore, business involved in food tourism should be aware of the fact that beyond the well-defined and specialized audience that seeks the specialized services, there is a much larger audience out there looking for them simply because it happened to travel somewhere. Successful business should find efficient ways to show their services to the smallest audience of food tourism travelers, but also to the bigger audience of incoming travelers. In this way, they will earn a profit from as many clients as possible. What are the peculiarities if we want to promote successfully our business in social media? What do we need? One. Study all available social media to understand the audience and the characteristics for each one. Take notes before you decide which ones should to you and to a food tourism boy business. Choose these social media that you think are appropriate for you and for your business. At the end, you have to make your final decision. Which are the social media that you will eventually use? My advice. I work almost with all social media from 2009 until today. I do it personally and I do not pay a company to do this for me. I dedicate every day a couple of hours to promote my company's future plans and projects to social media. I also dedicate two hours every week for studying all new trends in every known social media. Over all these years, the results are amazing. Everyone who belongs to my network whenever and wherever I meet them, seems to know very well what my company is doing. In each social media, I promote my work in a special way. Let's look at some common promotion rules that suit to all social media. Common rules for every social media promotion. In a period of financial crisis, businesses are trying to reduce their costs, as we said. Here are three basic rules for successful promotion methods in all social media. One, to make your, your posts successful in social media, they have to be greeted by a large number of people. How do you secure this? 
The easiest way is to use an open profile that many people will follow. If you want a lot of people to follow you, you have to follow back a lot of people too. You have to show that you like their posts, you have to comment on them, and you have to answer to all the comments that your own posts take. You have to be interactive. Do not confuse the open professional profile with the personal profile. Through an open professional profile, we show our work and not our personal life. If you, however, want to share your personal life's information on the internet, you can choose one from the social media that suits you best. But while leaving everything else aside, while you can handle it for your own benefit, ask for help from your employees and your business associates. Ask them to help you, if they want to, to promote your business online. Help them too to promote their products and services. Like one each other's posts and share one each other's photos, texts, etc. Facebook, a special case. It can be used professionally, but, we, but what we can do without paying? Creating an open professional individual profile. Create and upload professional posts with a personal touch. Take lots of photos from your products and services. Highlight what you want to emphasize. Simple users' photos seem almost always to be more authentic. That's why they perform very often better than professional photos and they attract more people. We don't have everyday time and inspiration. Prepare the content of your posts in time. The best practice is to prepare all your posts once a week. The Facebook pages have become a professional tool. They require professional knowledge and a lot of time. It's better to create groups. It's much easier to get a good performance if you create an open Facebook group for your food business. Make synergies. Collaborate with your business best partners and create shared content. Do not forget to consider seriously Facebook's recent announcement. From now on, personal posts will be favored, since most people prefer Facebook as a way of personal communication. This means that you have to find a way to promote your business by posting more personal content. You have to stop to act as in the past. For example, a post of a customer who will tell you how satisfied he has been with your services is the perfect one. Second, and perhaps more important, is that in order for your post to be highly viewed, you must find a way that many people recognize you as a familiar person. In that way, they will decide to add you in the network of their best friends. If they consider you a civil professional who promotes his company, they will definitely not prefer to be informed about your activity. All the above, I are defined in a constantly changing environment like social media. In a year from today, a new social media network may have become more popular and we all need to adapt it and learn how to use it. But this is the challenge we have to face if we want to promote our business in the best and most affordable way, especially in times of economic crisis. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Maria. And remember, we are going to be uh, waiting until the end to take questions. I've already started to note some questions down, and I'll ask those as well later. Uh, Zenny, are you ready? There she is. Just unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello from me. Just a second. So, Kalispera or Kalimera from me. Carlos Orisa Testinelada, even through the webinar. Welcome to Greece. Eat to live and not live to eat, Socrates. We have to find out whom we will eat and drink before we find what we eat and drink, Epicurus. There is no difference between a poet and a cook, King Nicomedes once professed. Greek tourism industry and especially food sector is trying to put this belief into practice. I begin my speech with these uh, statements because they express me as a Greek, as a mother, as a researcher of tourism. Diet, culinary art, and gastronomy are integral parts of the tourist experience 
and the organization of the tourism and travel industry. The sector of culinary art has greatly contributed to the fulfillment of the objectives of a tourist policy geared towards improving the competitiveness of the tourist product. Last but not least, it has uh, forged a tight link with the tastes we grew up with. Nutrition has a historical, cultural, ecological, religious, social, and economic dimension. Modern cooks uh, rely not merely on personal zeal and uh, technique, but also on knowledge and the close monitoring of changes occurring in society. Culinary art generates culture and uh, determines nutritional habits that are directly associated with health and popular tradition, both of which are of great importance to all of us. Food tourism is traveling to other destinations in order to consume their food. I believe that the topic of food tourism is not new. The recent growth of it is due to the technological revolution, the role of internet and social media, and because traveling is easy and cheap. More and more people choose to travel to other countries for the sake of trying their food. As the motivation to experience food and while traveling growth, destinations with appropriate levels of food and wine resources are able to develop gastronomy tourism. So gastronomy has a particularly important role in tourist destinations. Additionally, local culture is becoming an increasingly valuable source for the enriching tourist experiences of visitors and tourists. Gastronomy is strongly connected with creative tourism as tourists are willing to learn and eager to increase their cultural capital by creating rather than just consuming. Tourists who choose gastronomic holidays want to learn how to cook, want to learn about the ingredients used, the way in which they are grown, and appreciate how culinary traditions have come into existence. In developing gastronomic experiences for tourists, in an increasingly competitive tourist market, it is important not just to base the product on the culture and traditions of the destination, but also to provide a link to the culture of the tourist. This means not just their own local or national culture, but also the culture of tourism. The developers of gastronomic tourism spend more time building bridges between spaces of flows which provide the global market of gastronomy and spaces of places where that gastronomy is produced and maintained. Since the very first post-war years, Greece has been in the most touristic countries of Europe. The international arrivals of tourists from almost non-existent in the year 1950 reached 13 million in 2001, approximately 27 million in 2017, and uh, estimated to exceed 35 million by 2020. The overall contribution of tourism to employment is estimated to reach 26% in 2018. And in the past two years, Greece managed to grow at 7%, double of the world average, 3-4%. To do this, the Ministry of Tourism implements a strategic marketing and promotion plan in conjunction with private operators and regional and local administration to increase Greek destinations and tourist traffic during winter. The quantitative growth model of Greek tourism is determined in four different periods in relation to the growth trends of international tourism and uh, the life cycle uh, phases of the product. The first period 
1950 till 1970, represents the phase of introduction and development. From 1971 to 1980, we have the stabilization phase. The third period, until the 1990, represents a phase of uncertainty. And the fourth one, until 2008, uh, uh, is a phase of uh, maturity, uh, saturation, accompanied by an understandable international political landscape and a global financial crisis. Statistically, the phenomenon of uh, massification of uh, the Greek tourist model could be described as an increase in arrivals, which uh, goes back uh, to a complex process involving, at the same time, uh, the quantitative increase the gradual uh, replacement of tourists of uh, middle or high uh, income categories by tourists of lower uh, categories. Uh, this clearly describes uh, the limitation of the consumption of the sun sea products. The statistical observations were not then able to diagnose the crisis in the tourism sector. I will point out that um, at the time of the international economic crisis around 2008, Greek tourism was already in decline. Greece stopped being a cheap uh, option for tourism. The emergence of competing countries offering similar tourist products with a better product price combination. Despite our, uh, our already existing weaknesses, Greece ranking in 2010 in international arrivals was 17th and in revenues 21st. Quite high places for a small country. Also, uh, in the same year, we accounted for 1.6% of global arrivals and 1.4% of revenue from tourism. The international economic uh, crisis has affected global tourism. However, uh, Greece tourism was particularly bad as the countries that fueled Greece with tourists had also entered a uh, recession. The international and Greek economic crisis has hit the Greek tourist businesses and the Greek consumer, hence domestic tourism. The 2008 global economic crisis had hit not only Greece, but also Europe as a whole. In Greece, the crisis has become devastating for the working classes after implementing the measures of fiscal adjustment contained in the bailout program, known as Memorandum of Understanding, which was signed between the Greek government and the Troika, Europe and European Central Bank in May 2010. In this economic environment, Greek tourism had to survive and uh, identify its future. As I said before, the warning signs have been evident since 2008, but no attention has been paid by those responsible. The thousands of businesses living directly or indirectly from tourism try to survive in a hostile environment. These first difficult years proved that uh, Greece tourism strategy and policy were based on loose foundations. At this point, private and public sector tourist providers have suggested that uh, Greek tourism should move towards sustainable tourism development and be de-emphasized by the model of mass tourism with emphasis on the sun and the sea. Around 2010, a scientific research was conducted at the national level to examine the future and to create a national strategy by 2020. At the years 2011, 12 and 13, a new strategy for promotion of Greek tourism is implemented, compiling a new marketing mix and selecting the implementation of promotion actions per target market. Also, the target audiences to which Greek tourism now has to address are trendsetters, style hunts, uh, and so on, which uh, should be fed with um, 
any element of added value in the overall traditional and anticipated image of the authentic destination Greece. The new vision of Greek tourism begins to yield positive results. The role of the private sector becomes important and effective. In the light of the above, and in combination with international trends, we created a new strategy for the promotion of Greek tourism for the period 2014-2016, which included the following official lines. Positive development of Greek tourism and stimulation of the national economy. Development, a new communication and promotion strategy based on nine thematic sections corresponding to the main sectors of Greek tourism. Each branch corresponds to specific activities, proposals, products, and aims at attracting individual common objectives. Particular emphasis is placed on special forms of tourism, such as medical, gastronomic, educational, healing, elderly, and so on. Greece is projected as a classic, anthropocentric, traditional, authentic, historical destination. Shared viewing programs are created with tour operators and other partners, each covering the cost of the actions it chooses to implement. In addition, Greek National Tourism Organization works with specialized travel agencies in order to multiply the benefits of communication and positively influence demand. The extension of the network of partners and uh, partners with uh, specific objectives and areas of action is also achieved by the conclusion of Memoranda of Understanding, which define the basic framework for cooperation and areas of joint actions. Lastly, it is worth mentioning the establishment of an emergency and incident management team on uh, vigilance and immediate reaction and the preparation of an action plan, which is updated annually to achieve uh, uh, the least possible loss at, at all levels. As already known, these initiatives have yielded excellent results since uh, 2017. Greek tourism has moved on to Greece strategic 365-day uh, marketing strategy with an emphasis on more specialized proposals and products. Gastronomy tourism is a prominent place. The concept of uh, authenticity in Greek astronomy has long been recognized in the conscience of Greek and international tourists. Gastronomy is a tourism resource. Greek gastronomy is part of the, of the Greek culture. It uh, identifies a lifestyle that differs from the way of life of other people, like the French or the American. But we also speak of Cretan the culture, the Ionian, the Mani, the Cycladic, or respectively for local cuisines. Gastronomic roots are becoming, without doubt, one of the most developed products in our country. A gastronomic, uh, gastronomic route is uh, a system that uh, constitutes a comprehensive and thematic tourism offering, generally branded, and is defined by one or more itineraries in a given geographic area, although in reality gastronomy has no borders, with a series of tourism products or sites, such as factories and restaurants, uh, which are listed in tourist guidebooks and which revolve around a specific food, product or dish, generally with uh, differentiated quality or gastronomic events or activities. In Greece, we have four gastronomic routes of flavors. 
The first one is Thrace, Macedonia, and Epirus. Thessalia, Greek mainland, and Peloponnese. Of course, the Greek islands. And the fourth is Crete. Even it is an island, it has a unique thematic concept. Greek gastronomic tourism is directly linked to other special forms of tourism, such as agro-tourism, eco-wine tourism, uh, as well as to the environment in a visible and two-way relationship with immediate and long-lasting effects on environmental protection and the promotion of cultural heritage. Our cultural heritage, Melina Mercuri used to say, is at the same time the happiness and the misery of our country. Happiness because it offers us uh, the uniqueness of Greek culture, our heavy interest in, the best ambassador of our country abroad. Unfortunately, in order to prove our respect for this culture, it takes a lot of work and above all, huge amounts of money, many times as much as possible from a country like Greece. Finally, it turns out that gastronomic tourism, as it evolves in our country, connected with authentic folk culture, creates a characteristic cultural pro tourist uh, symbol that can become a pole of attraction for tourists. I believe that we have to pay attention to three issues. The role of food tourism in increasing tourist spending, the potential role of food tourism in extending the tourist season, and the re-examination of uh, food tourist typologies within a sustainability framework. Destination managers should embrace sustainability to maintain or gain their destination reputation and the competitive advantage. Greece is a small and insular country. That means we need to add uh, distance, lack of critical mass, vulnerability, risk, and many other conditions that can only be addressed through sustainability, efficiency, and not following the usual path. The decision-making process must consider a multi-sectoral approach and not only a cost-benefit analysis. For instance, the use of water, landscape, waste production, energy, impacts on biodiversity should be considered together with the usual indicators uh, such as uh, employment and uh, income. Branding the Greek gastronomy tourism, we based on the fact that Greece is one of the greatest brands that never been branding, actually. So we searched for our identity as a destination. We understood that we need to plan regional and local. Brand is what people think about you. Brand is the set of impressions that exist in people's head. Branding is the process in which we manage a brand. It is the communication plan of the image of a place with the aim of achieving the strategic choices with ultimate pursuit of the economic result. And how do we manage Greek gastronomy tourism? First of all, with public-private partnerships and then with the involvement of local societies. The visibility of Greece as a culinary destination is based on the original axis that construct the concept of Greekness, namely classicality, anthropocentrism, tradition of accessibility, and historicity. The monuments, the way of life in Greece, 
the existence of the pub table, the specificity of Greek cuisine in relation to the Mediterranean, the traditional pro products of the country, reinforce the notions of tradition and authenticity and historicity. Finally, the characteristics of Greece and Greek culture, which all together make up Greek kitty, portray the country as a whole. Two, two special quality labels uh, were created, Greek breakfast and Greek cuisine for restaurants and hotels, which are already very, very successful. As examples of good practices, I have to mention the campaign of a GN Airlines called Kerasma, in which uh, at uh, each time displaying an authentic Greek product according to the geographical areas I mentioned before. In addition, the Tourist Promotion Department of Central Macedonia region is currently implementing the Macedonian cuisine, which is a national and international program. The project, Thes Brands, has already gained tremendous recognition thanks to the collaboration between the Tourist Department of the Municipality of Thessaloniki and the Thessaloniki Convention Bureau. Finally, uh, it, it would be a great omission if I do not uh, mention the wine roads of Greece that have been recognized for many, many years in the consciousness of Greek and international tourists. My dear friends, many people use the word austerity for the Greek economic situation. Austerity exists in the Greek language, such as in the word afstirotita, uh, derived from the ancient Greek verb avo, that means to dry up. It translates into strictness, harshness, Rigidity. The, uh, for example, one of the talk about the host, can talk about austere teacher or austere rules, but not about austerity measures. In Greek, the word litotita is used instead of the term austerity to refer to the cutthroat measures. Litotita resonates with simplicity, frugality, and asceticism. Austerity is always imposed. It needs a, a subject and an object, but litotita is usually lived, often, 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 even as a personal choice. In addition, austerity has an uh, implied connotation of discipline. It needs an object that is going to be disciplined because they did something wrong. The same is not true for the Greek term litotis, since there is no punitive dimension uh, to its significations. Greece has experienced 25% drop in gross domestic product, a 28% reduction in public sector employment, 28.5% drop in food consumption, 61% drop in the average pension, with 45% number of pensioners living under the poverty line. Tourism is the main pillar of the Greek economy's growth. Linking tourism to Greek astronomy and culture Greek production can enhance the tourist product and travel experience, enhancing Greece as a tourist destination and the ties of visitors with our country. The ministries and producers involved during this period uh, draw up an action plan to create horizontal and vertical chains of value linking to the country's tourist product to the Greek production levels in the agri-food sector, as well as in uh, the manufacturing sector, equipment of hotel units 
and accommodation, aiming at uh, the creation and organization of modern clusters that can effectively link Greek production to the tourist market, the creation of new dynamic and stable jobs, enhancing regional development in the sense of a smart specialization through the emergence and exploitation of the local advantages and potential of its region's products. The way out of the crisis go through the tourism industry as it is the industry that actively supports local societies. As a final conclusion, I think we should be careful with too much of a top uh, down and one size fits all approach. Bottom up and smart networking is often preferable. Local destinations should look for local partnerships and attract attention of investors and get government support by doing things right. Sharing a vision as a local destination is the key. <coughs> At the national level, the focus should be on leveling the field of play for sustainability. We should also be realistic. Still, too many destinations are focused on quick, often international fame, and waste energy on infighting. For long-lasting success, we need to patiently build the right foundations. That means being able to have a long-term view and ignore the myths of high growth and easy riches as we did in the past. The destinations that succeed realize that an attractive destination is good for visitors and the visited, that it is hard work to keep the stakeholders aligned and keep market interest over the years. Growing slower is better. I think this is the way to create more benefits in the long run for business, the community and the environment. Destination marketing organizations must be clear, coherent and consistent in their marketing in order to attract the right kind of tourists. It is wrong to try to be everything for everybody. Sustainability is an internal concept. It is not the first thing that attracts people to a destination or product, but helps assure them that they are making a good choice. By hazing the experience, be it gastronomy tourism, with sustainability inside, it will contribute to a positive word of mouth. And finally, it is essential to establish key indicators that will help to monitor performance, identify problem areas, and help to improve. Or, if it is outside of the control, help persuade others to support changes. And ideally, these key indicators should be public. Remember, you can manage what you do not measure. And the question is, networking or not working? F. Haristopoli, thank you very much for your attention. Zenny, thank you very much for that. That was very interesting. I'd like to invite delegates to start typing any questions you have into the chat window. And you access the chat window by mousing over the presentation panel. And at the bottom, you will see the control panel. Uh, one of the things that I picked up from your talk, let me just, sorry, start my video. There we go. One of the things I picked up from your talk was that uh, it sounds like Greece almost forgot that there was competition out there, that the world got so busy and all these other destinations came online. Uh, meanwhile, Greece was getting expensive. It was part of the EU and prices were skyrocketing. And it's almost like Greece thought that it would always be popular. And then all of a sudden, all this competition came online. And with the global financial crisis, it caused Greece to have to go back and kind of reinvent the Greek tourism product. And one of the things I think that was very interesting from what you were saying 
is the need to identify specific target markets and really specialize in who you're targeting. So rather than just promoting sun and sea, which uh, is a very popular reason to visit Greece, now looking at specific tourism products. So whether that's gastronomy or business tourism or nautical theme, uh, which I saw on the, on the slides as well. Um, so I thought that was, that was interesting. Um, one thing that I wasn't clear about, it seems like Greece has really spent a long time developing its tourism strategy. Is that right? Or how long has it been working on this tourism strategy? Xenia, Maria, do you know? I think it's better to answer, Xenia to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, your thoughts are very right. Uh, we spend a lot of time to find out how we'll uh, draw this uh, strategy uh, because uh, uh, in the first three period, as I mentioned before, everything was going easy, very easy, because it was one, the model, only the mass tourism was the model and everything was depending on the big tour operators. So the, pub, the government and the public uh, had no strategy at all, <laughs> let's say the truth. Uh, I think uh, after 2008, around uh, the end of 2008, uh, we realized that the cooperation between the two sectors, it was necessary. Uh, the co the, 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 that was the bad, bad part. The good part was that uh, as soon as they realized, they did the corporations, they did a lot of work, and now we have the first results. Greece is a classical destination. Even the problems, we exist so many years. And I think uh, what we said, uh, that uh, the model of sun and sea is not accept. I don't think that uh, we don't want it. We want it. We have a lot of sun, uh, wonderful sea, and uh, this is one type of a product. Mm. All the others, uh, now it is in a serious program we implement in these target markets because Chris is uh, having a paradise in Earth. All the markets, the targeted markets were unknown for us. Now we start very, very, very carefully uh, working on this. And I'm sure that uh, we will see wonderful things in the future. Okay. And so I think, um, you know, what, what, one of the things that we wanted to look at was the red flags that uh, can lead to this kind of situation uh, and indicate that changes will be needed soon. And so Greece was in a situation of mass tourism. There were big tour operators bringing people in. And the products that were being sold were generalist, sun and sea. And so I guess the lesson here would be for any destinations, you know, not just a country, but um, even, you know, a state or provincial level or a regional level, if, a con if that destination has those three things, mass tourism, big tour operators, and generalist products, you're not going to survive. And you're going to have to really reinvent yourselves to, to succeed. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was... So it's a stressful time. Uh, there's enormous stress. There's a lot of emotional intensity. People are very stressed and they're you know, in, in crisis mode. Uh, how do we join all of these players together so that we're all singing the same song? You know, when, when things go like this and when there's a crisis, a lot of people will think for themselves, you know, I, I have to survive. So how, has Greece come together and said, no, we need to survive? We are not always together. Sometimes every one of us think uh, himself, think his own family, his own house, his own business. But one of the characteristics of Greeks is that uh, in difficult times, we unite, we stay together. This is something that we saw to the world historically from the ASEAN times until now. So we had very difficult times, we still have. The economical crisis is in the country. We are not get over with this, but uh, we find ways to communicate, to cooperate, 
this is a, a characteristic of our uh, of our people here. And it we, sounds like really it's not the things that unite us, not the things that separate us. So focusing on that, could I, could I add just a word? Please. Thank you. I think that uh, what I said in the last of my speech uh, said that uh, the producers and the agri-food sector with tourist sector now, they're cooperating. This is a kind of survival program because we, they produce and they connect the, pro the new products and the new ideas, the innovation uh, through the tourism sector because it is true that the uh, tourism industry in Greece is the most uh, rich industry. So uh, this is a kind of, um, uh, I think this, uh, it's a good model to see and face the future. One of the other interesting things to add to that, Zenny, is that it sounds like Greece has really spent a lot of time working on its branding over the past couple of years. Uh, before the brand was just, you know, sun, sun and beach, and that was it. And now you're trying to associate other things with the Greek brand. And I think the Greek breakfast, for example, when it comes to cuisine is a very good way to do that. But I also think there's an opportunity when we talk about Greek cuisine, uh, it's one of the classic cuisines in the world, but there's two things going on. First of all, a lot of people are used to experiencing Greek cuisine in their own countries. And it's not the same when they come to Greece. And a lot of people don't know that. And the other thing is that the cuisines of Greece are different throughout the country. And as an example of that, if you look at the Greek breakfast website, they have a map of breakfast products that are typical for different parts of Greece. So you could be in Macedonia or down in Crete or in Mykonos, and you might get different things. And I, I think that a lot of people don't know about the differences of Greek cuisine. So what is the Greek Ministry of Tourism doing to uh, dispel the stereotypes that Greek food is only euros and souvlaki? <laughs> I like very much euros and souvlaki, but of course this is right. Uh, um, you see, Greek cuisine is a very rich cuisine. It's not a different, uh, the Mediterranean diet, and the Mediterranean cuisine is uh, something let's say, the, the cover of the book. Every country will have many, many, many uh, same things with Italian cuisine, with Spain, with uh, other countries of the Mediterranean. But of course, Greece has a unique uh, cuisine, not only as a country, but also to specific places. The only way what uh, we started also to do this, to implement these uh, specific progress, uh, pro uh, programs, is to promote each area with their own programs. There is no other way. Uh, for example, uh, Crete, it's a unique, it's a concept of itself. It is an island. But the products that we find in the Ionian Islands, they are quite different from the Aegean Islands. Northern Greece has other things. So the uh, the invo uh, involving the Greek Ministry of Tourism, involving all in all these actions, the municipalities, the prefectures, and of course the specialized people from the private sector. They give results. They have uh, give focused programs, marketing plans, and I think we are in the right way. Okay. I don't, okay. Thank you. Now we do have one question and then we'll need to wrap up because we are running late. And also Maria and Zenny, if you'd like anyone to be able to get in touch with you, uh, you can put any of your contact information in the chat window. The question is, because sustainability emphasizes small scale over mass tourism, what are some effective ways for marketing sustainable gastronomic tourism products? Well, uh, it's uh, always sustainability is to, uh, as well, the cuisine and the gastronomic products. Uh, sustainability for us means uh, that uh, what I plan 
considers the local people, the societies, and I try to persuade people to work with local rich uh, food, um, what is around us, and uh, to have uh, multiple kind of jobs, which all of them are connected with the uh, tourism industry, the agri-food sector, and of course, for the good of the place. I mean, for, for the, uh, let's say, for the future of its local society, because uh, we are a small country, we are, we are, but we have um, very rich things from the earth, from the sea, from the <laughs> for everything, and also the innovated um, minds. So sustainability can be something easy if we decide to do this and if we cooperate with this. Mass students gave us a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the, we have a lot of results, bad results, because, okay, we have income. We, we have a growth, a development uh, uh, from mass tourism. But we had many, many problems with uh, the, the places in everywhere in Greece. This is not good. That's why we say sustainability, sustainability, sustainability. And then first of all, the destination organization, producers and managers, they have to realize that we have to start from the small everyday things. Mm. Indeed. Wonderful. Well, thank you. And uh, Maria yeah. and Zenny, thank you both for sharing your knowledge and your experience today. We really appreciate it. Uh, I see Maria's email there. Zenny, do you, would you like people to contact you by email or Facebook or Twitter? By email, by email, I would like to. Would you like to type your email in the chat window so people can, can contact you if they have further questions? So there's Zenny's email. Thank you for providing that, Zenny. And uh, Zenny and Maria, thank you again so much. We've really enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to get back to Greece. I miss the Greek breakfast and the wonderful food uh, that I had last time I was in Santorini. So hopefully uh, we'll experience another island next time. So uh, thank you again. And I look forward to seeing everyone in uh, one of the next sessions here at the Online Food Travel Summit. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.